winky face. Reaper yeah, right. Keep on him. Reaper right. Yeah, nice. Yeah, we get it. Yeah. Boot to the face. Boot to the Somebody face. Leave. Boot <laughs> to the face. Hello guys, my name is SVB and I'm here to give you some essential support tips. In this video, I'm going to explain what I would call the three most important principles to support play. And after that, I'm going to give you a unique tip for each support hero in the game. A big shout out to Blizzard for sponsoring this video. But before we get right into it, I should probably explain what a support hero is. The reasons heroes in Overwatch are called support and not healers is because healing is not the only thing that support characters do. All in all, there are seven of them, and in many cases, Healing is actually the less impactful part of their kit. Support characters have some really powerful abilities and if you can master those parts of your support character and understand what it is that makes your particular pick strong, you'll really level up the impact you can have on a game of Overwatch. So to start off, I'm going to explain to you guys the three most important principles of support play. The first tip I have is to die less. Now, this sounds incredibly obvious, I know, but as a support, it's important to remember that you should be the last person to die in a team fight. Tanks, for example, are supposed to go in and take damage. That's part of the job they signed up for. Doing so may even get them killed, but it might just make the space for their team to be able to win the fight. A support should not do that. Healing and utility are your job, and these will keep your team up through long engagements. If you die first, your team will probably die shortly afterwards because they won't have the ability to sustain themselves in a long fight. It follows straightforward logic, but the longer you stay alive, the more heals you put out, which makes it more likely your team will also stay alive. But don't worry, I'm not going to leave you hanging on the hows. The next two principles will help you achieve this and much more. Natural cover is one of the single most important concepts in Overwatch when it comes to positioning. Every role needs to use it, but for supports, natural cover is often the difference between life and death. Basically, natural cover means using the map geography to provide you with something to hide behind from enemy fire. Any part of the map geography that absorbs damage can be used as natural cover. Our friend Zenyatta will now demonstrate some examples, but feel free to get creative and find whatever you can. Greetings. The reason that natural cover is so important is because it allows you to protect yourself. If you only rely on your tanks to provide protection for you, you will find that they will frequently let you down. Even the best tanks will sometimes need to put their shields down or do something else for a minute. If you only use shields for protection, you're letting someone else decide whether you live or die. But if you have natural cover available at all times, you will have the control. And if you sense your tanks are about to be pressured, you can duck behind it to make sure you live. Take this example. If you stand out in the open like this and the enemy Reinhardt Earth shatters your team, you along with all your teammates will be affected and probably die. But if you're using natural cover, you can be the game changer. If you see this move coming and are ready to duck behind natural cover, you can dodge the earth shatter and potentially save your entire team, thus making a big hero play and turning the tide of combat. These kind of strategies are eventually what decide the difference between a win and a loss. The final principle I want to talk to you guys about is one that many people don't know or simply ignore. Support your support. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say you get into a position like this. You're playing Mercy and both your Ana and one of your tanks are under threat and getting low on HP. Naturally, your tank is trying to fight them off and your Ana is trying to heal your tank. If you also start healing your tank over your Ana, she will likely die. If your Ana dies, it makes it that much harder for you to keep your tank up, especially since the attackers now have one less target to deal with. They might even turn their attention to you. Instead, if you heal your Ana, she can then in turn heal the tank, and now all three of you can stay alive and have a better chance of fighting back together. Remember that as long as the healers are alive, there's a chance you can keep everyone else up too. So, keep those principles in mind, and I promise you will see some big improvements in your gameplay. Now, each of the supports has their own nuances, so I wanted to finish by sharing one quick, essential tip about each of the support heroes. Everybody thinks that Ana is all about aiming, and while it's true that the more shots you hit, the more output you will get, the true strength of Ana is in her abilities, particularly her biotic grenade, often referred to as an anti-nade. 
Anti-nade is the only ability in the game that stops enemies from healing, and if used well, it can single-handedly win fights. If you feel your team is struggling to win fights, try getting into an aggressive position to land a big anti-nade that your team can clean up on. If you always sit back and let other people make the plays, you might find that nothing ever happens. Batiste's Immortality Field, or LAMP as the community calls it, is one of the strongest single abilities in the game, so using it effectively is the key to this hero. The best tip I can give you is to be stingy with it. Try to use LAMP as a last resort and not at the first sign of danger. If you waste it early, you will not get it back for a long time and you might find you needed it more later. Remember, you're still a hero who can heal a lot very fast, so assess the situation first. Can I heal this target up? Is my other healer helping? If so, I can clearly save this lamp. Lamp is best used for situations where you know there's about to be a lot of damage coming in that can't be healed quickly enough. Brigitte's a really strong healer and damage dealer when she's close up. But out of fights, when those long poke phases we're all familiar with are going down, Brig puts out very low healing. If you're just armor packing and never have your inspire up, you're just not going to contribute a lot. Your teammates will slowly die and you'll just feel helpless. The best Brigitte's will always be using their whipshot ability to trigger inspire as often as they can out of fights. Just find a target you can reliably hit and flail them whenever the fight hasn't broken out yet. It's going to keep you healing all the time and your teammates will be very thankful for it. What makes Lucio unique and strong is his speed boost. No one else in the game can do what he does. If all you want to do is leave your heal song on, then there's other supports who will output way more healing. So avoid being a heal bot and understand that if you pick Lucio, it's primarily to speed your teammates around. This was the only plausible outcome. Sure, it's fun to wall ride around and look for environmental kills, but those can be unreliable. Short ranged comps in particular are often weak because of how slow they are, and as a Lucio, you can compensate for this. A well timed speed boost can be a powerful weapon or a lifesaver. Similar to Lucio, if you just heal with Mercy, then you're wasting the hero's greatest strength. What makes Mercy strong is actually the less often used Blue Beam, her damage boost. Every single Mercy player will output the same amount of healing when using her heal staff, whether you're a Grandmaster or you're brand new to the game. The difference between an average Mercy and a Great Mercy is that the Great Mercy will maximize every second of damage boost she can squeeze in. You really have to push hard. Any second you could spare healing in favor of damage boosting is a good one. Of course you do need to heal as well, but you should always be looking for that extra edge and the most successful mercies are the ones that find the best balance. For example, if you see your teammate in a fight, you might be tempted to heal them, but sometimes boosting their damage allows them to win the fight faster and more effectively. If you just heal your reaper like in this demonstration, he'll stay alive, but the enemy hog might stay alive too long enough to get his hook cooldown back, at which point he could turn the tide on your reaper. Instead, by damage boosting, you let your reaper win the fight before that ever even happens. You can always heal them up afterwards once you've won the fight. The best tip I can give you for Moira is what I would call the yin and yang of orb usage. The most difficult aspect of Moira's play is resource management. It's built into the hero's kit. If you want to heal, you can't damage, but to heal more, you need to do damage to fill up your resource meter. This is why you should always try to compensate for what you're doing with your hands with what you're doing with your orbs. If for example your team is far away from the enemy and just taking a bit of poke damage, you're going to probably want to heal your team up in small amounts. So rather than heal and throw a healing orb out, which would be overkill, throw your damage orb out at the enemy. You can't damage them at this range anyways, so it's a good way of getting your ult charged up and putting pressure on the enemy healers. Similarly, if you know you want to start damaging someone, either to finish a kill or to replenish heals, then you're going to be leaving your teammates without healing for a while. Compensate for this by throwing an orb in their direction to make sure they don't feel that HP loss while you go and do what you gotta do.
Zenyatta can be really strong in the right hands, but he's also a bit of a glass cannon. If he's in a bad position, he's the most easily picked off support there is. It's really important as Zen that you try and look for that safe spot that lets you avoid as much trouble as possible. Try to keep a few things in mind. Stay in a spot where you have an escape route and also in a spot where you know your healing partner will be able to help you. You don't need to be too far back, just find that middle ground where you're close enough to fight but too far to be isolated easily by your opponents. With Zen, just existing in the fight can be really powerful. You might not get the credit, but just having a Discord Orb increasing the damage going through on a target will make a massive difference. This is just with one person. Imagine the difference it makes when five people are focusing your discorded target together. And that's all I got for today guys. Hope you found this video helpful, and I hope it helps you think about supports in a different light. If you're looking for more in-depth information, I'm highlighting on screen now one other content creator for each support hero for you to look at. If you really want to learn about how to play your particular hero effectively, check them out. In summary, remember these principles and try your best to maximize the individual strengths of your particular support hero. You can and will change the outcome of a game even as a quote unquote supporting character and once you start to master them, you'll really find that these backline characters are actually pretty darn strong.